Hello guys, in today's tutorial we're going to make a, a, a camera that adjusts to multiple screen resolutions. So this is very useful if you want, if you have like a, for instance, a game that you want certain parts of the screen to appear. So say if you have Pong with one panel here and one panel here, and you want them to always appear. In this case, if you the camera aspect ratio changes, the panels wouldn't appear. So this will be useful in situations like that. So and this tutorial is just going to add a script, it's going to be a bit raw, it will not be any game mechanic or anything like that, so bear with me. So here on the scene I just have a main camera and a CD, which is this CD right here, just so that we can orient ourselves and understand what the cam what each thing does. So I'm going to add a new script to the camera and I'm going to call it camera screen resolution. And let's open it. And in here, the first thing that we're going to do is to make the screen maintain its width. Because right now, if I play, you'll see that he only adjusts its height. So say I change the the camera, the height is maintained. So you can see always the seven and always the these numbers on the bottom. But what if you want it the, the opposite to happen? You you don't care about you don't care as much about the height, but you want the width to remain the same. Well, we're going to do that in an instant. So, to do that, first we're going to create here a public bool, public bool, maintain width equal to true. And then here on the update function, we're going to check if maintain width is equal to true. Then we do something else which is when maintain with it's false so we want to maintain the height we'll do something else later so um, what we want to do is to basically change dynamically this orthographic size over here and by the way this script will only work with orthographic cameras because perspective cameras they have a field of view which is works in a different way so for orthographic only anyways for orthographic cameras the if i put the size at one what you'll see at is that half of the height is one so you know that the, this size over here corresponds to half of the height and so what is the width how much is this from this half of the width from here to here well if i put the aspect ratio at for instance 3 by 2 which is 1.5 you'll see that the width the half width is equal to the size times the aspect ratio so it's 1.5 as you can see and we're going to use this fact to build our camera script so I'm going to create here a variable called uh, default width and it's a float default width And we want this to be, we want to set this width on the beginning. So what happens is you're making your game, whatever, and you want the width to be exactly this. So okay, you set it here to be this, and now the script will work with this width that you set here. And we're going to set this width on the start, so which will basically come from this value. This is the height, the half height. You, the default width will actually be the half width. So we do, so the default width equals the camera dot main dot orthographic size times the aspect ratio, like I was saying. So the, the aspect ratio is camera dot main dot aspect, which as you can see here is the width divided by the height. And that's the default width. And now here, to update the the camera to so that the width that we want is always the same, which is always this. But because we can change the width, we can only change this parameter, the size. We have to do like the opposite of this conversion. So and this is an equation. So for instance, here you have width equals the size times aspect. So all you have to do is put you want to isolate the orthographic size so you just put this term 
into here, but instead of being multiplied, it will be dividing. So camera dot main dot orthographic size equals default width divided by camera dot main dot aspect. And just like that, we made a screen that maintains its width. So let me just show you in a second. So this is checked, and we've got okay. I want this to be the default width, so I hit play. And now, if I change the screen, you'll see that the width is maintained. Although you can't hear, you can't see this, the the numbers over there. The width is always maintained. You will always see from one to nine, no matter what the resolution is. But sometimes the height will have to change because it's a compromise. You trade one for the other. And that's it. Now, uh, there's one, one last thing that I want to do in this tutorial, which is a feature that, like I was saying, it helps you maintain a certain part of the screen in the screen. So, for instance, right now we want to maintain the width. And let's say, uh, besides maintaining the width, I also want to see, always see these buildings and these numbers here on the bottom. Because right now, if I do this, I can't. And uh, let's say those numbers are really important to me, are really important for the game. And I want to really show them. Then what we have to do is to basically move the camera in a smart way so that they always stay there. And that's what we're going to do next. To do that, first I'm going to create here two new variables. Uh, should be float default height, and we will be also be using the vector free camera position. And now let's set them here on the start as well. So default height is equal to camera camera dot main dot orthographic size and the camera position is equal to camera oops dot main dot transform dot position. Just like that. And now let's say like I was saying that you want these numbers to always appear. Well then here on the maintain width we're going to change the camera's position. So we do camera dot transform dot main dot transform dot position be equal to something, which will be a new vector to new vector free. And in this case, because we are maintaining the width, so the width is always the same, we want to, to anchor the camera, so we want, in this case, these numbers to appear, so we want to move the camera up or down, in order for these numbers to always be there. So, what we do, is we maintain the, the X, so we make the camera position dot X here, we're going to change the Y, and we also maintain the Z, camera position dot Z, like so, and now, what we put here, well, first because we want to move the camera down because we want to see those numbers in the bottom, we multiply it by minus one. But and what we put here, well, it's very simple. We have to do default height minus the height of the camera right now, which is camera dot main dot orthographic size, and this. As you can see, it's different from the reference of the height. This is the default height, which is the, the height that you set on the camera here, the size. And this is the the size of the camera right now on the on that precise moment after you change the ratio. So, and this will move the camera a few pixels down or up to make it always show where you want. So, if I play, you'll see that these numbers will always appear no matter what's the aspect ratio so as you can see you see the 1 and the 9 and I will change the, the remember the width will always be maintained so no matter what I do the width is maintained and these numbers will show so if I do this the numbers show and the rest of the sky doesn't well and before when I didn't have those lines it will just center on the middle so then the middle of the camera will always show but the sides, on, in this case, the bottom and the top will be cut. In this case, it's the, it's the opposite. The bottom is always showing and the rest is cut. 
So, what if you want, instead of showing the, the bottom noise, want to show the top of the what appears on the camera? So, you put here a 1. So, just to make this more easy to change, I'm going to create here a public int adapt the position. And because I want this only to go from 1 to minus 1, I'm going to put here a range minus 1 to 1. And this will limit where this variable goes. And now here, just instead of putting here a 1, I put that position and save. And you will see that now it will appear here a slider. There you go. And if I put the slider at 1, you'll see that it will maintain the top. If it was at 1, at minus 1, it will, these numbers will always appear, because it's at 1, this 7 over here on the top will always appear. So like so, as you can see the 7 is always there, the rest of the camera shows or doesn't, depending on whatever you want. And again, the 0 is instead of, centering, instead of showing the bottom or the top, it always centers, it anchors to the middle, so the middle always shows. Now. The only thing that's left to do is to do this exact line, but for when we want to maintain the height, when the height is always the same. And it's a pretty similar line. Camera.main.transform.position equals new vector free. And now the x, we're going to change the x, but the rest will be the same. So I do here camera position dot y and and then camera position oops dot z and there's only left to do the the x which is something very similar to what we put here so what we do is that position times and it's pretty simple now instead of using the height use the width so we do default width minus the camera dot main dot orthographic size but we it just not it isn't just this it has to multiply by the aspect because this corresponds to the height we want to correspond it to the width so we just multiply by camera dot main dot aspect and just like that we made the same behavior for the the other axis. So right now, if I check this, so the height, the height will be always the same. So it will always show from this one to this seven. But if I, for instance, adapt to the minus one, it means that this one will always appear, and the nine sometimes won't appear. So if I height, the one is always there because you know this will be the case where you are, you have a infinite runner. You have your player always on this zone, so the, the player will always appear, no matter the aspect ratio. And if I do the opposite for the if I throw there uh, a one, the nine will always appear. So as you can see, if I shrink it down, I do whatever I want, the nine is always there. And of course, the zero just focuses on the middle. So the, the numbers on the side will disappear and the, this 5 and this 4 will remain there, as you can see. And that's it. This was this tutorial. I know that it wasn't very uh, thrilling or anything else, but it's something that's important, which is the, the screen resolutions and how to adapt your game to multiple screen resolutions. Because, for instance, mobile has a lot of screen resolutions and whatnot. And that was it. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one.